He's my dad, and that's his partner. It's like we have two dads. Just found out. Trust me, it was a surprise. <laughs> Been together 30 years. Feels like 50. <laughs> When talking about comedy movies that didn't live up to their full potential, it's hard to overlook Old Dogs. The movie, which centers around two aging business partners who become the temporary guardians of two seven-year-old twins, was allegedly written and shot as an R-rated comedy. It was set to be released under Disney's Touchstone Pictures label, but when test screenings went poorly, the studio recut and reshot portions of the film, trimming out 25 minutes of the more edgy material and dialogue. It was then marketed and released as a family-friendly PG comedy through Walt Disney Pictures. I swear the movie even references this at one point. There's a camping sequence that is oddly short. I'm assuming they shot a lot more here and then cut it out, later explaining it away like this. Don't mind the fact that I just took a three-day camping trip and shortened it to nine hours. Let me fire! Wow! Oh, no! That's not good. Get the car ready. So does this mean there exists an R-rated cut of this movie in the Disney vault somewhere? Eh, probably not. I have my doubts that this was actually the case. Both the director, Walt Becker, and star John Travolta were fresh off the success of the oddly similar titled Wild Hogs, which was a surprise smash hit for Touchstone Pictures two years prior. Wild Hogs, which contains some adult humor, was released with a PG-13 rating. Oh, daddy. Damn lucky. I've always felt so. I think Old Dogs was more or less intended to be similar in tone. A family comedy with some adult elements. That's Bear Scat, gentlemen. Yeah! Yeah, it is. Do I poop on my face? Yeah. I mean, it would be really difficult to turn an R-rated movie into a PG one without there being severe inconsistencies. Plus, there's just too much goofy kid humor in this movie for this theory to make sense. It's complicated. Regardless, it's clear the film was trimmed to a certain degree, as there are some adult themes in the movie which feel limited in their execution. You do know where kids come from, right? Yeah, sure. Can you tell me? The male and the female of the species, uh in what some have called the dance of springtime. A lot of the movie suffers from pacing problems with jokes and storylines that never really pay off. I mean, they even sanitize the deleted scenes on the DVD. Here's a cutscene that takes place at airport security. Body check home. Body check! Body check. You two, together? Oh, yes and no. Body check, I know. And, and that's the end. You know there had to be another shot after they got searched of them shuffling away awkwardly or something? But nope, never brought up again. At least in the PG version of this movie. A lot of the humor in this movie feels similar. It almost hits the punchline, but then the scene or joke just ends. I'm not going to poison our children. They're in safe hands. Have you ever been to a casino? No. Have you ever seen the movie Casino? No. Despite being a modest box office hit, the film was critically panned, and failed to reach the same financial success as Wild Hogs, which even convinced Disney to cancel their planned Wild Hogs sequel. Damn lucky. Old Dogs is still worth talking about for several reasons though. Not only would it end up being the last time Robin Williams worked for Disney, a studio he had a long yet troubled relationship with. The movie would also become the final performance of the great Bernie Mac, releasing after his death in 2008. Lastly, it was a huge passion project for Travolta, as both his daughter and wife, the late Kelly Preston, appear in the movie. It's also inexplicably loaded with a great supporting cast. Stop it! Don't eat that. Those are dog treats. I've always been pretty captivated by this film, though, especially as a fan of Robin Williams. I'm putting it dry, Grandma! There are babies on board! Excuse me, kids. To their credit, both he and Travolta are actually pretty fun in this. It's the other elements that are a little... bizarre? But there are some elements that also work too, showing that this project would have worked far better and been more consistent as an adult comedy. It's all worth dissecting though, so let's take a look back at the neutered mess that is Old Dogs. 
Like I said, Wild Hogs was a surprise smash hit for Disney in 2007, grossing $250 million worldwide. The studio then greenlit a sequel, set to be titled Wild Hogs 2 Bachelor Ride. They were also so confident in director Walt Becker that they quickly signed him on for another comedy, Old Dogs, that same year. The script, originally titled Old Dads, was written by the writing duo David Diamond and David Weissman. If I'm going to be an old dad for two weeks, you're going to be Uncle Charlie. Well, I want to take care of the kids! Who had previously written the sci-fi comedy Evolution and The Family Man with Nicolas Cage. The studio changed the title to sound similar to Wild Hogs. Great logic there, Disney. And then they forced an old dog into the plot for it all to make sense. In a unique move, Robin Williams actually plays the more mild-mannered member of the two, named Dan. There's no typical montage where he goes in and out of a dozen different impressions. He's pretty restrained here, and it works. Me. I remember once I was reading a story to Zelda, and it kind of parallels this one. I was reading it to her, and I was doing voices, and she literally said, Don't do the voices, just stick with the story. <laughs> I was like, okay, thank you. But it was that thing of just being so honest, like Ella was with me, just like, don't do that, you know? Well, and playing and doing that kind of role-playing stuff where you do play the characters, and that's great, but back off on it. Look, Robin Williams is definitely the best part of even the worst movies that he's in. And this is no exception. The most compelling element of the movie is his character suddenly coming to grips with being a dad in his 50s. But then he also has some great physical comedy scenes that are pretty fun. Catch you later. <laughs> To his credit, Travolta is pretty good as well. He plays the more crass, zany member of the two, named Charlie. The kids have never seen Friday the 13th, part one or two! His character borrows a lot from Charlie Harper of Two and a Half Men, borrowing his womanizing behavior, name, and even hair. Shut up! Shut up! Stop! Move forward! He's the one who often talks Dan into horrible ideas, like the scene where he convinces him to get a spray tan. I'm from Hoboken. Shut up. Shut up. Stop. Move forward. These two guys surprisingly have chemistry, despite their different acting styles and careers. Their two characters are overworked, running a sports marketing company, which, as you may have guessed it, is set to close the big deal. With Japanese clients. And to complicate the whole ordeal, an old fling, Vicky, played by Kelly Preston, shows up and announces that Dan's the father of her seven-year-old twins. <laughs> Vicky, it turns out, is headed to prison for a few weeks for protesting as an environmental activist. After Dan nearly murders her best friend, he becomes the only option for watching the kids. I guess here's a good place to mention there is so much comical, over-the-top, loud mugging throughout this movie. Are you okay? Hey, oh, I am so sorry about that whole pie thing. I mean, it must be my blood sugar or something. <laughs> of course, Dan's condo has a no-kids policy, and the most serious no-kids policy at that. These are mine! I see kids! <laughs> so they have to move into Dan's bachelor pad, and you probably see where this is going. There have been countless other comedies that have used this premise before, a single guy or multiple guys become the unconventional guardian of some kids. Pretty much all of these movies have a much needed backstory though, that sets up why these characters have an aversion to kids. Like my freedom. I, I like knowing I can throw my sticks in the trunk of my car and go golfing anytime I want. I don't hurt anybody, I don't, I don't see what the problem is. That is the best formula for loneliness I ever heard. It's something that even exists in Jurassic Park. You are alive. And they start to eat you. So, you know, try to show a little respect. The closest we get to that kind of scene in Old Dogs is this. Whoa! Oh, God! Why did you do that? Uh, my bad! But there were only so many places you could take this type of story in 2009 to feel fresh. It reminds me of this great joke in one of my favorite shows, Father Ted where the leads find a baby on their doorstep, but then it gets taken back right away. You really think that's where this episode is going, 
but then it switches. Would you have been looking after it and everything and getting into all sorts of hilarious jams? <laughs> the whole thing would have been very, very funny. <laughs> well, uh, it wouldn't have been that funny, Ted. <laughs> Actually, no. It hit the nail on the head decades ago in that there's only so much you can do with this premise. The thing that sets old dogs apart, and the element that should have been played up more, is that here it's two aging over the hill guys looking after the kids. The parts of this movie that work well are when the humor revolves around these two guys dealing with getting older as well as being guardians. There's a scene that I actually find really funny when they take the kids out for dinner and this happens. Hey, seniors, 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 enjoy the family day. Seniors, 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 we hope you're here to stay. Seniors, 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 we like to make a fuss. There's another great gag where Travolta gets some water spilled on him. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. No, this is just an accident. Oh, don't worry. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. I'm not embarrassed. It was I'll get you something. Or this sequence where the kids switch their pills, ruining Dan's depth perception and turning Charlie into the Joker. I wanted to see more of this type of humor in the movie. Everything else is just sadly formulaic stuff that we've seen in other movies about unconventional adults looking after kids. Scene where kid overhears main character complaining about kid, check. Scene where main character realizes the importance of family during a big important business meeting, check. Scene where the leads use a popular children's entertainer played by Bernie Mac to connect with the kids via a high-tech full body control suit. Check. <laughs> okay, maybe that last one isn't at all formulaic. It's actually really out of place. I guess the concept is supposed to be that Bernie Mac's character is a legendary children's puppeteer and can teach Dan how to move and act around his kids. So let me get this right. You want to hire me to take this uptight man and make him a human puppet? Yes. I'm going to do it for you. Ah. But then Charlie just ends up controlling Dan anyway for some reason? Why does this scene exist? I told your boy not to get the battery pack wet. He, he's on his own. Sorry, Emily. If the whole purpose here was to make Dan realize he just needed to be himself around his kids, then why did we even need this gimmick? It's great to see Bernie Mac, though, even if it's for a few minutes. It would have been far more compelling for Dan to envy Charlie for getting along so well with his kids, only realizing it's because Charlie was just being himself. Charlie, at the same time, could realize that it's time for him to settle down, because he comes across as a natural father figure. Nah, this gets us there in half the time. Watch this, watch this. <laughs> laugh, laugh, laugh. Where's that gradual evolution here? I want to see these guys growing into their roles as caregivers, but also coming to grips with getting older in the process. Walt Becker comes so close to tapping into that quirky humor that made Wild Hogs a surprise hit. The scenes that are memorable are the ones that lay off the unnecessary gimmicks and just focus on these two irresponsible guys suddenly developing a true affection for these kids. The movie comes so close to giving us that much needed arc, but it reduces a lot of that character development to a single montage. And for what purpose? So they could fit in scenes like this. All out of love, so lost without you, I know you were right. And I bet you're thinking, why was this gorilla cradling Seth Green such a big part of the movie's marketing? It happens when Dan, Charlie, and their executive, played by Seth Green, have to break into a zoo to attend the kid's birthday party. Naturally, a gate outside the zoo just so happens to lead directly into the gorilla enclosure. And of course, we have to get that cute animal scene in here, so here's some penguins. Oh. Here, in a scene that feels straight out of Jingle all the way, Dan literally becomes the superhero that his kids want, using another piece of technology that doesn't really exist. But he fails, which the movie finds the need to show us multiple times from every possible angle. And then the movie wraps up, showing the actual ending over the end credits. We don't even find out how Seth Green escaped the gorilla. I'm gonna say here what I said about Year One a couple of weeks ago. Old Dogs isn't a bad movie, it's just really disappointing given the talent involved. 
Say what you will about Wild Hogs, but it tapped into something that a lot of people responded to. It was a silly family movie that also had some edgy themes, and it worked really well. Old Dogs should have taken the same path, but instead it doesn't really commit to being edgy or a family comedy, instead becoming a tonal mess that just wastes a really fun premise and great casting. It's even more heartbreaking to see three amazing talents who were taken from us too soon all fail to reach their full potential in this movie. There is some good here, but it's overtaken by bizarrely placed gimmicks and set pieces that don't fit the story or the characters. It's just another example of the studio system taking a fun premise and interfering to make it a bland, unfunny mess. But if this movie teaches us anything, it's that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. <sighs> and it wasn't well animal either. <laughs> what? Get off the screen! Ha, 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 ha.